We've now developed the Lagrange method for solving the consumer's optimization problem. And we've seen how that method can allow us to calculate optimal consumption bundles that look like this. The next question we're going to ask is, under what circumstances might the Lagrange method run into problems? And to understand the answer to that question, we have to understand what the Lagrange method actually does. What it does is, it looks for tangencies just like this. So the only way that the Lagrange method could run into a problem is if the optimal consumption bundle isn't a tangency, or if there are tangencies that aren't optimal consumption bundles. Let's see how that can happen. So first, let's look at the case of an indifference curve that has a kink in it. So it might be an indifference curve like this that has a kink Perfect complements are an example of this, but they don't have to be so extreme as perfect complements as long as there's a kink. In that case, the optimal consumption bundle might lie on that kink. But that's not a tangency. There's a corner here, and there are lots of slopes that can hang on that corner. It's not one unique tangency. And since the Lagrange method looks for tangencies, it would not be able to find such a point. So we're going to have to assume that there are no kinks in our indifference curves. Another example would be the case where there are flat spots in the indifference curve. So perfect substitutes would be an extreme example of that, where the indi entire indifference curve is a flat spot. But there might be less extreme cases. You might have an indifference curve that just has a flat spot like this. And then it could be that there is a budget line that crosses that flat spot. All of these consumption bundles on that flat spot would be optimal in that case. But it's not a unique tangency. The Lagrange method looks for unique tangencies and therefore would not be able to pick this up. So we're going to have to assume no flat spots in our indifference curves. Then, it might be that instead of the convex tastes that we've been working with, the tastes are non-convex. Non-convex tastes would give rise to indifference curves that might have bumps like this. This would be non-convex because we can pick two points on that indifference curve and the line that connects them, that contains the weighted averages between those bundles, lies below the indifference curve. So the weighted averages would be less preferred than the more extreme bundles. And that's a violation of convexity. Well, in a case like this, we would be able to find an optimal consumption bundle like this. And that is, in fact, a tangency. So the Lagrange method would, in fact, pick that point up. But there are other tangencies in this case. There might be another indifference curve that lies below this one and has a tangency down here. That's not an optimal point, but it's still a tangency. It's not optimal because it lies on a lower indifference curve. There might be an even lower indifference curve that has a tangency on the bump. So that's another tangency. The Lagrange method picks up all the points that are tangencies. So the method would give us all three of these points. And we'd have to do some extra work to find out which one is actual, actually the optimal bundle, this one. So in order not to have to do that, we're going to assume no non-convexities. Finally, we might have indifference curves that cross the axes. So indifference curves that look like this, for example. In that case, one of the goods is not essential. In this case, x2 is not essential because you can get more and more utility by just getting x1 and you don't need to have any x2, so x2 is not essential. 
when we have indifference curves that cross the axes, but that are still convex and have no flat spots and no kinks, we might get one of two situations. One situation is one where there's still a tangency on the indifference curve, I mean on the budget line. So despite the fact that the indifference curve crosses the axis, there's a tangency here, in which case that's in fact the optimal consumption bundle. You can't get to any higher indifference curve than that. And the Lagrange method would pick it up. But we could also have a case like this, where we have a budget constraint and we have an indifference curve that looks like this. It crosses at this corner. And so if we extended the budget constraint, we can see there's no tangency here. The Lagrange method looks for tangencies, and so it would not be able to find this one. It would still search for tangency, and it would find one, but it would find one way out here. It would tell us that you want to consume this much of x1 and this much of x2. But that's a negative quantity of x2. Here's zero. And we know that that doesn't make any sense. So when we have a case where the tastes are convex and no kinks, no flat spots, but the indifference curves cross the axes, we might run into a situation where the Lagrange method gives us an answer that doesn't make any sense. If that happens, we know that we are actually at a corner solution. So the bottom line is this. If we assume that all goods are essential, so we don't have indifference curves that cross the axes, that there are no kinks, no flat spots, no non-convexities, so everything's convex, then the Lagrange method will pick out the one unique optimal consumption bundle. If, on the other hand, we have non-convexities, it'll pick out a bunch of bundles, and only one of those is going to be optimal. So we'd have to do some extra work. We're in this course simply going to assume that that never happens. We're never going to have non-convexities. And then finally, we have the case where indifference curves cross the axes, where some of the goods are not essential, in which case the Lagrange method either gives us an answer that makes sense, in which case that's the right answer, or it gives us an answer that doesn't make any sense, in which case we're the corner solution.